going to try to help you out here, right? Chris, you know, you, you do this, right? So you, you are a shop owner at this point. So I guess you, I'm talking to you too? <laughs> no. I might be a shop owner, uh, Lake, but I, I don't do this. I've got guys that are more qualified than I am to do this. But yes, at the end of the month, I'm the one writing the check. Yeah, yeah, All definitely. Right. So as I've traveled around the country and around the world over the, many years now, one of the things that I've noticed is that, and I hate debt as much as anybody, right? So I understand that people not wanting to spend money and to buy new equipment. But the reality is the efficiency of this and the struggle to get employees is so great. Yes, it is. What, what I see what you've done here is pretty much, I would say, a blueprint for what a lot of shops can do. So I, I know that people struggle with the idea of making the investment to get machines like yes. you have here. So can you speak to everybody that, as a shop owner and tell them, what your thought process is, why you've done what you've done in terms of, I'm gonna call it building a modern machine shop. Now, that's really what I feel like you have here is a real modern machine shop. Yeah, I don't see any manual machines here. Everything is more modern, automated. Yes. Where, you know, we've, as we've done in the past, we've shown the, the videos where, you know, one guy's running three machines. You know, we can, you can go, if you wanna see that, you can go look at the archives, right? Right. Uh, but talk about, why you did what you did and maybe some advice to the shop owners and how to maybe overcome that mental hurdle to making that step because it seems like that's the resistance i get people say i see that but i, I can't afford that and i'm thinking man you can't afford not to well and that's exactly you can't afford not to and i know on the internet and and i'm on nip this in the bud i get a lot of pushback from shop saying, well, that automated equipment, I can do just as well on this uh, manual machine that I've had for 30 years because I've got 30 years experience. And that statement is, to, to most degree, very true. The problem is that guy with 30 or 40 years experience, mm -hmm. he is now gray haired, he's maybe ready to collect social security, and he doesn't exist. Because let's think about it. the last two generations. We have told the last two generations, don't follow dad into the foundry. Right. Don't follow dad into the Ford plant. F go get you an education and better yourself. Okay. Well, what we've done is we've taught these last two generations to go better themselves, and we don't have anybody to work in the foundries. Right. We all struggle. There isn't an automotive machine shop out there in the United States or even in the world. I've got customers in Europe. I've got customers in Australia. Right. We struggle with this every day, finding qualified people. Well, if you can't find qualified people, the only thing you can find is automated equipment and machinery like Rottler, like CWT, like um, Axe, mm -hmm. a lot of these companies have taken and they've added, they've, they've allowed these machines with technology to become more, much more self-sufficient so that you've got a guy that can run this machine, he can run two or three machines. So it's not the aspect that the machine is better, it's you cannot find somebody with 40 or 50 years experience. To run the, mach to run the machine. To run the machine. Yeah. Now, Back to your point on, I can't afford this. If you're gonna find that guy, let's say you find that guy, okay, and he wants to work another five or six years. Well, you're gonna end up spending probably somewhere between 50 and $70,000 a year, okay? So let's just use five years and $50,000, okay? So over the course of five years, you just spent a quarter million dollars on that employee, right? okay? You take a machine that's much more automated uh, like this CNC head porter from Rottler, this five axis machine and stuff. Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking somewhere fully tooled, uh, somewhere between three hundred dollars and $350,000. If you were paying a guy $50,000 to port heads every year, okay, then after five years you spent $250,000. And then maybe he gets sick, uh, maybe as a family member, you know, maybe he decides, you know, new industry rolls in and they're going to give him another five, ten dollars an hour, which has happened all over the well, United States. I'm saying States. that. I'm saying 50 may fly in East Tennessee, <laughs> but it won't fly in Arizona. It won't fly in California. Well, again, right? yeah. I mean, that's the thing is when you, when you, like you said, the industry coming in, I can see what's already happened, like say for us in, in Phoenix, Arizona, when these chip plants come in and they're putting in these new uh, facilities, now all of a sudden that hourly rate goes so high yeah. 
mean, you're talking about for a regular machinist to be making close to $100,000 a year. Right. So like you said, in a three or four year period, you could easily spend more than this machine's cost. Correct. You know, so. 100%. It, it's, it really is about that mindset shit. And the other thing I, I think about too is, in terms of the quality of work, I have no doubt about it. A, a seasoned professional that is at one with that machine they've used for 30 years can make as quality a part as any of these machines can. But it can't make as many right. parts as these right. things can. Yeah. And that's that, because this can run when the lights are out. Well, and that, and we talk about that quite a bit in our industry and stuff, lights out. That's when you make your money. A, mm -hmm. a plant during the night shift and stuff, when they've got a skeleton crew, that's when that facility is making its most money. When we leave at five o'clock, mm -hmm. the boys make sure that there's a casting in this head and they push the button and this thing runs another five, six, seven hours with lights off in the shop. That's making money. There's nobody on the payroll. All I've got is electricity spent on that type deal while this thing's sitting there churning at $90, $100 an hour type deal and making chips and stuff. So you have to look at what that machine, don't look at what it's going to cost you. What is that machine going to make you? There you go. That's the key. What is that machine going to make you? And with the automation that we have today in the industry and stuff, if you've got one qualified guy and hey, when that chip company comes in, and if you've got two or three pieces of automated equipment, you may be able to bump that guy to seventy, eighty thousand dollars a year because now he's running three machines. So mm -hmm. let's say his hourly wage, you're paying him forty-five, fifty bucks an hour. Okay, if he's running three automated machines like what we've got here, and let's say your shop rate's one hundred and fifty bucks an hour, you're paying him fifty. Three machines times one fifty, that's four fifty. You can afford that guy at fifty dollars an hour because right. those machines are allowing you to be able to do that. So, I think it's a mindset as far as on the business standpoint of stuff. You have to look at it. What is that machine going to make you? What does that automation bring you to the table? And I'm not saying go out and buy a machine like this because you don't. If you're not porting cylinder heads, you don't need it. Okay. Now, you may need a seat and guide machine mm -hmm. and valves, right. we've got, we're, we're surfacing heads and that type deal. So if you're seeing a, a trend where you're getting a lot of a certain engine in there, then you may want to look at a more automated machine that you can tool and fixture so that you've got easy setup time on that. Right. And then that way you can make, make your money on something like that. Uh, you Honing, know, seat and guide, surfacing, those right. are the things that are pretty automated. Exactly. You need to look at some of that type stuff and, and look at a piece of equipment that speeds your process up where you're making your money so that you can make more money. And that, that seasoned veteran, because you know I'm 55 years old, okay, I've probably got another 10, 12 years. Most of my customer base is at least 10 years, if not 15 years older than I am. They're retiring. Uh, we have, there's been many shops to close up. And yes. again, since we've not told the last two generations, follow us, they've gone to go do something else type deal. So as the pool shrinks uh, and we become more of a cottage industry type deal, uh, the more automated shops, the work is going to get more intense. So the more automation that you've got in the shop, the better off you are. I, I think guys in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, I think the next 10, 12 years, I mean, I think we're going to have some of the best years that we've ever had as far as making money on this stuff. We see that, that because a lot of the shops have closed, because of the guys are just gotten older and, and things and they've, they've stepped away, there's fewer shops. But people still want to race. They still want custom things, be it a boat or a car or whatever it is. They want to go fast. They want to have their toys. So the shops that are left are busier than ever before. Like you said, but you can't get the talent that has the experience. It's that's hard to find. So this is the answer. It, and like you said, it's an easy return on investment by saying, okay, I plan on being in business for at least 10, 15 more years. So if you are in your 40s or even your 50s, it's pretty easy to say, I can buy this stuff, I can get it paid for, and I'm gonna be, I can handle more business and make more profit long term by investing in the automated machines and modernizing my shop in order to be able to handle the increased demand because that demand's there and it's only going to get bigger as more and more shops close. And the, really, to be honest, I feel like the shops that don't automate are the ones that are going to be left out. Right. Right. 
Matt Hussey's here today uh, with us and stuff, mm -hmm. going to do some stuff on some diesel stuff. And Matt and I were over coffee, we were talking about this morning. And he feels that the piece of equipment in his shop that's the most profitable is the head surfacer. So okay. you, take an, you take an S85 or an S86 from Rottler that's an automated type machine and you've got a, dealer, a couple dealerships, you know, reach out to those dealerships. Hey, I can give you quick turnaround time on any surface uh, of cylinder heads and that type deal because where before on the older equipment you'd have to dedicate a guy, sit there and watch it, and, and lack of a better term, babysit it. Yep. Uh, that you know, They'd have to crank the dial down, move the head down, take another pass and stuff, right. check everything. With the Rottler or more automated type piece of equipment type deal, you set it and forget it. You walk away and that thing's sitting there working while you're doing a valve job. Uh, maybe you're pulling another head off this. Maybe you're doing a balance job or something um, like yep. that. So we're, again, we're back to you, the mindset has to be if you got two pieces of, your, if your labor rate's $100, and you're running one piece of machine, you're making $100. Right. If you've got two machines running, your labor rate's 100, it's 200. Right. Okay. Listen, this is where the math this, is important. This is where, this yeah. is where it happens as yeah. far as that goes. That's where the money's made. So, you know, being automated, if you can get automation and you can get three pieces, mm -hmm. 300 bucks an hour now. So now you can kind of make fun of your attorney or your, um, uh, or, 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 or your <laughs> cardiologist or what dentist <laughs> yeah, or whatever, right. because now you're making more money than he is type right. deal. And uh, again, the, the labor pool and the way it has shrunk here in, in the last, and even pre COVID, I mean, right. it was already shrinking. People were struggling. Um, uh, a friend of mine, Frank Beck, out in uh, Arizona. Absolutely, yeah. Frank's Frank. been looking for a qualified person, and I mean, he's offering six figures a year to come out there and work. Now, that's when you said uh, earlier about fifty to seventy. I'm thinking, dude, I know guys who've been in this for a long right. time. They're offering a hundred grand a year for yeah. people to come work for them, and they can't get people to come work for them. Well, and it's it is we are in an industry that has been driven by passion, the love of cars, and that type deal. We are compared to other industries as far as where machinists are needed and stuff. We are on the lower scale of pay, so it yeah. has to be a passion. It has to be something you enjoy doing right. and, and and you're passionate about and yeah. stuff. But there's still a good opportunity as far as shop owners to make uh, good money, uh, a reasonable living and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I think automation is going to be part of it. And it's just hey. You know, we all had, you know, my generation, we grew up with a rotary phone. Some of yeah. us even had a party line. I mean, yeah. there, there's kids today have no idea what a party line is, okay? It's just the evolution that we've gone from a, a rotary phone to a wireless cordless phone to a cell phone type deal. To a smartphone. To a smartphone type <laughs> deal. And so now we've gone to equipment in our industry with a touch screen. It doesn't have an amber bulb. It doesn't have a load meter and stuff. But hey, even old old dogs like us, Lake, we can we can learn this well, stuff. Well, you, you made a great point right there. I guarantee you, you got a smartphone. If you got a smartphone, you can run one of these machines. Yeah. It's not something you can't do. It's like the you can't teach the old dog new tricks. I'm like, I'm sorry. No, almost everyone has an iPhone or some kind of smartphone. There's some kind of touchscreen thing. Right. So I don't want to hear it that you say you you can't learn it because anyone can learn it, right? Well, and it's and you know, I am not a machinist, I'm not an engine builder. I publicly state that on a daily basis type deal. Do I love this industry? Yes. And am I passionate about this industry? Yes. Yep. But the boys have even been able to teach me how to load this thing. And if you can <laughs> teach me how to load this thing, but I mean literally, so I'm here on the weekends when I'm up here in Tennessee, I'm here late in the evenings and stuff. If this thing's not running, it ain't making any money, and we're not paying the bills. Right. So I, they've showed me in touch screen, boom, boom, boom. I can sit there, torque the head in there, hit the play button, and it goes type deal. So yes, you can learn. Is it intimidating? Yes. But Rottler will tell you, this is CNC porting for dummies, and here's a dummy. And listen, if, I, if, if, they, if they can train me, they can train anybody. All right, there you go. So no more excuses about why you can't automate your shop, right? Right. It's going to make you money. It will keep you in business longer and will make, make your life easier. Yeah, it, much more so, yeah. And yes, do you have to maintain the equipment? Is there might be a little bit more cost? Yes, but return on, the, return on money from what I've looked at mm -hmm. the standpoint when I first started automating in 17, yeah, it's well worth it. There you go. You heard it from the man. Automate, don't populate. 
What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. He told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.